friends, in this post-pandemic world of uncertainty and rising costs of living, people everywhere are searching for hope. Well, the Ontario Conference Lay Evangelism Association is pleased to share with everyone in the program Reassurance, Certainty in Uncertain Times. It's July 9 to 23, 2022. Connect with us at oclear.ca, Ontario Conference Lay Evangelism Association.ca or on Facebook so that you can hear inspiring messages of hope and reassurance as given to us by Jesus Christ himself. See you there July 9 to 23 at 7 p.m. except Mondays and Thursdays. Reassurance, certainty in uncertain times. Good day, my friends. I am Rainford Cornish. I'm the first elder at Northwest Brampton Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm excited to be part of the 2022 Oakland Evangelistic Series. Yes, this series, Reassurance, Certainty in Uncertain Times. These are unprecedented times in which we live. And I cannot wait to open the word of God with you nightly with all the other evangelists. Please join us from July 9 to the 23rd and I'll be speaking on the topics of the law as well as the as well as baptism how to begin a new in Christ oh I cannot wait to see you this is going to be an a, a wonderful series where we open the word of God and, and introduce you anew to Jesus Christ I'm looking to see you every night from July 9 to the 23rd see you then God bless you Hello friends, this is Sami Adriatico. I'm one of the evangelists of this upcoming beautiful series entitled Reassurance, Certainty in Uncertain Times of Clea Gospel Series. I pray that you will be able to join because God has created something beautiful for you and your family and for all of us. Hope to see you. Blessings. Garcia from the Cambridge Seventh-day Adventist Church. I graduated from the Ontario Conference School of Evangelism in 2012 and became a member of Eau Claire the year after. Eau Claire has been amazing in providing ongoing and necessary training for lay members. And now, through this year's evangelistic series, we've come to reassure you that there is certainty in these uncertain times. It's a great pleasure for me to join you once again with a message showing the importance of God's children of all denominations to be united, especially as we draw nearer to Jesus' second coming. We all profess to be following the same leader, and yet some follow doctrines not founded on biblical truth. Is this God's plan? I invite you to this series and to hear the topic, A Church with a complete package. I look forward to sharing with you what Jesus has ordained in order for us to be united in his love and have no strife or divisions. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you and your family safe. Bye for now. Reassurance, certainty in uncertain times. It's July 9 to 23, 2022. Connect with us at oclear.ca, Ontario Conference, Lay Evangelism Association.ca, or on Facebook, so that you can hear inspiring messages of hope and reassurance as given to us by Jesus Christ Himself. See you there July 9 to 23 at 7 p.m. except Mondays and Thursdays. Reassurance, certainty in uncertain times.
das Brustband. Church. We serve a mighty God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. There is none like Him. Father, you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no
times like these You need an anchor Be very sure Be very sure Your anchor pulls And grips the solid rock This rock is cheap Heavenly Father, we gather in your presence assured that you are the liberator of our sins. We know that in your presence, abundance of grace is available and eternal life is ours to claim. Thank you for the opportunity many will have to receive assurance truth and hope in your precious promises grant to our viewers a special blessing 
from the evening's proceedings. Bless the evangelists with your divine wisdom to declare your words. We pray these and other mercies in the name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Amen. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and work today? Fields are white, the harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long, the master call it. Rich reward, he offers free. Who will answer? Gladly saying, here am I, O Lord, send me. Good evening, and a God-blessed welcome to everyone to the reassurance certainty for uncertain times evangelistic series whether you are on youtube facebook zoom and instagram you will certainly hear messages of hope for the times in which we are living if this is what you are seeking we promise you that our God will not disappoint you. Amen? On behalf of the leadership of Ontario Conference, Lay Evangelistic Association, and the Ontario Conference Personal Ministry Department, welcome to this dynamic series. Our scheduled time for the meetings will be as follows. We'll begin on July 9th, to the 23rd at 7 p.m. every evening except Mondays and Thursdays. Here's a very important thought for you. As you listen to the nightly messages, please participate in the online quiz as you review the messages. You will also have a chance of winning prizes which the master quiz We'll explain to you later. Do you agree that we, will all, we all need special prayer? Okay then. There will be an after prayer segment for all following the program. Here is a special bonus. The evangelist whom you hear each evening would like to greet you personally. And I say personally, following the program during the After Connect segment. Both of these programs are accessible on the Zoom platform only, which will be listed on the screen. God has sent you to this place at this time to listen to this reassurance, certainty in uncertain times evangelistic series. The meeting ID is 8 Eight two zero four one 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 six two two, and the passcode is three zero six three three eight. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless. Good evening, everyone. Here is the time you can all participate in the nightly quiz. Let's begin our quiz section segment this evening with the answers to the message on Tuesday, July the 19th. What comes next? From Evangelist Leonardo Barbosa. Statement number one. When righteous people die, they go to heaven. The wicked go to, straight to hell. This statement is false. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 tells us that we all return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Statement number two. The dead know some things, but not everything. This statement is false. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 to 6 tells us the living know that they will die, but the dead knows nothing. 
Statement number three. The Bible compares death to a sleep. This statement is true. The Bible tells us in Psalm 13, 3, that death is a sleep. Statement number four. When Jesus returns, there will be no one alive on the planet Earth. This statement is false. We learn in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, that some will be alive when Jesus returns. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Statement number five. Jesus said that he is the resurrection and the life just before he took Elijah to heaven. This statement is false. Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he may live. He, yeah, and I repeat that, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This concludes the answer for evangelist Leonardo Barbosa sovereign eye-opening truth about death from the message, what comes next. Now you have an opportunity to review the message from Wednesday, July the 20th, where evangelist Kathleen Garcia shared the characteristic of the true church and how we can identify this current this church in the message, a church with the complete package. As we look at the statement for this message, we encourage those of you who can to access the link to the quiz card in the chat and comment box. At this time, so you can record your answers as I share the five statement with you. Remember, to qualify for a nightly prize and a grand prize, we have two grand prizes you must complete and submit the online quiz card. As we are coming to the end of the wonderful journey in God's word, where we find reassurance and certainty in these uncertain times, I want to let you know that tomorrow evening, we will announce the two grand prize winners and the most correct answers from the quiz from quiz one to quiz eight. So be sure to submit your quiz tonight. It can make all the difference. Now, let us get to the final quiz on the message, a church with the complete package. On the quiz card, indicate one answer for each statement. Are you ready? Statement number one. According to Revelation 6, the color of the four horses were white, symbol of purity, red, persecution and blood, brown, compromise, and purple, death, true or false. I repeat, according to Revelation 6, the colors of the four horses were white, symbol of purity, red, persecution and blood, wrong, compromise, and purple, death, true or false. Statement number two. The black horse showed the church in the time of the disciples going forward in its purity, conquering and to conquer, true or false. I repeat, the black horse showed the church in the times of the disciple going forward in its purity, conquering and to conquer, true or false. Statement number three. Baptism by full Im immersion is for adults, and by baptism by sprinkling is for children, true or false. I repeat, baptism by full immersion is for adults, and baptism by sprinkling is for children, true or false. Statement number four. 
The Seventh-day Adventist Church worship on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week, according to the Bible. True or false? I repeat, the Seventh-day Adventist Church worship on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week, according to the Bible. True or false? Statement number five. During the last two centuries, each church was founded upon the nugget of the truth they discover. True or false? I repeat, during the last two centuries, each church was founded upon the nugget of truth they, they discover. True or false? Well, Chris, scholars, and friends, this conclude our time together. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to provide your name and contact information before submitting your answers. And if you get five out of five, a perfect score, you will receive an online gift. Be sure to be here each evening, except Mondays and Thursdays, to review the answers, complete the nightly quiz, and increase your chance to win a prize. God bless you. Amen. Our speaker this evening is Evangelist Kenroy Jones. Evangelist Kenroy H. Jones was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica. He is a first generation Adventist and the first born of the Jones family. The man of God gave his life to Christ 11 years ago, and ever since that day, he has continued to live with purpose and maintain his walk with the Lord. Kenroy is married to beautiful Kimberly Spencer Jones, and they have three children. Romaine, Shante, and baby Israel. Kenroy is an alumnus of the Ontario Conference School of Evangelism and a member of Oakley, from which he graduated as a certified lay preacher, Bible instructor, and Sabbath school facilitator. His wife, or he and his wife, are currently attending York University, where they both currently studying in the field of psychology. Kenroy and Kimberly are founders of a nonprofit organization named Divine Design Ministry, which is focused on biblical counseling, youth mentorship, and couples counseling in Canada and Jamaica. The aim is to equip and restore the broken mindset of individuals and families and make an impact for God's kingdom. Kenroy's favorite scripture is Mark 10, 45, which says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As an evangelist, Kenroy's focus and endeavors are to always leave mental footprints in the minds of others that leads to Christ. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will use him mightily tonight. After the music of meditation, the next voice you will hear 
is of Evangelist Kenroy Jones. Let's receive the word of God with gladness as we pray for the preacher. May God richly bless you. Welcome back, and good evening to each and every one of you. Welcome to those of you who are tuning in for the very first time tonight, and those of you who have been night after night, evening after evening, tuning in. Welcome back. The Word of God must be preached to hasten the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Our theme for Oaklea Gospel Series, again, I like to expound on it. It's reassurance. 
Certainty in uncertain times. Hope in our hopelessness. Victory in our defeat. When man say no, God said yes. And I hope and pray this message tonight, along with all the other messages, has given you a hope in your hopelessness. Have given you new faith to be faithful even when you're unfaithful. And to give you a promise that is to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, there is victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Our sermon topic tonight is the seven last plagues. The wrath of God is revealed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is you, O oh God, we give all the adoration. It is you, O oh God, we give you all the glory. Father God, I pray for each and every one of the evangelists that you strengthen them and you may continue them to lift up a standard for you, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, for all the directors, all the, all the directors and the presidents, all the, the volunteer for priors and, 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 and Bible study and readers, all the support, O oh God, that is not on the front page, O oh Father. I pray, O oh Lord, that you strengthen each and every one of us. And most importantly, for the viewers who have been listening night after night, you're tuning in for the first time. Father God, you said, O oh Lord, if you have been lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Revelation 11, verses 18. It summarized the event of earth right before the battle of Armageddon. The nation were hungry. It states in Luke 21, verses 25, it says, God's wrath, which is his judgment, is a form of the last seven plague upon the unrepentant. Revelation 15, verses 1. The story had happened a thousand years ago in the land of Egypt. Sets the stage through tonight. Topic. The last plagues, the seven last plague, and of course, the mighty nation of Egypt was the most highly civilization empire than that is in existence back in those days. Here is before a God fearing slave named Joseph had elevated to prime minister and saved the nation from famine. But now he was forgotten. The friendly pharaohs who had known and admired Joseph for his belief and his faith in his God, who admired Joseph for his honesty, and who admired Joseph as a man of God, has now gone to the graves. He had died. His name was no longer remembered. And his thoughts and desire had perished. And as the Bible says, the dead is dead, and the dead know nothing. Even the thoughts of the dead is no more. So the children of Israel was placed in bondage, forced to become slaves under the grinding tyranny of Egypt. In the book of Exodus 2, verses 23 to 24, it says, as we read, the children of Israel ground because of the bandage they cry out. And God remember his covenant with Abraham. He remember his covenant with Isaac and with Jacob. And our God is a faithful God. Yes, indeed, my brothers and sisters, even when we are unfaithful, God is faithful. And the promises of God is not conditional. 
So even when our ancestors, our forefathers, and mothers, of course, died and gone and their name forgotten, God still remember his promises. When he makes a promise, he always keeps it. And he made promises to the patriarchs. He promised that they would be blessed by his descendants, the very people who were, who were now being what? Oppressed in Egypt. I could only see my brothers and sisters days after days and night after night when they pray and it appears that God is silent. They cry out when the whip lashes on their back. When they get underfed, there's no food for them. There was no hope. I can only imagine what it must be going through their minds and hearts. Did they rebel against God or did they continue to lift up the faith? Did they continue to be like Job? Although he slay me, yet will I praise thee. When God is silent while you're praying, do you continue that faith? Do you still have hope? Do you still have a belief? Moses made a mistake of thinking that he could do what? He could deliver Israel from Egypt by doing his own thing, by doing his own way. One day he saw an Egyptian mistreating one of his brother, a slave, and he rushed in and killed that slave master. God is not advising us or putting us in the way when people treat us bad to treat them that way. No, God is not an eye for eye. No, God is love your enemy as you love thyself. For those who mistreat you, pray for those who prosecute you. That's the kind of God that we serve. But when Moses made a mistake, God didn't hold it against him. That was only the beginning of the transformation of Joseph's heart and mind. Seeing others through the heart and the mind of Christ, no matter what. Forty years, Moses tended sheep out in the lonely desert. I can only see him right now, looking up in the sky, the stillness and the quietness of the night. But as a possibility, all he heard was crickets and animals mourning. The wolf yawning, howling. Moses had to learn patience and gentleness. Gone was that self-confidence in himself he displayed. Gone was that, that proud look of being what? A son of Egypt. Now he was a humble shepherd, tender of the sheep, lowly and meek. He was now forming the character of God. Yes, Moses was a type of Christ. And he was leading, he was chosen by God. Not appointed, but anointed by God to lead God's sheep, to lead his people out of the promised land. Hallelujah. In the encounter of the burning bush in the desert, Moses, um, God gave Moses his instruction. He was told to return to Egypt, a place where he has been running from, a place that is a possibility he will be murdered once he's seen. To help Moses according to accomplish this tremendous mission of God. God instructed Moses and his older brother Aaron, go out and meet Moses. Not only Aaron um, lend that moral support, he could also serve Moses as a spokesman. Because for most of us who know the story, Moses wasn't a person who spoke with eloquence or any kind of poisonous. I, I, I guess when we do the study and we heard Moses spoke with a stutter. We could say in today's era, in the time that we're living, we could say Moses spoke with an accent. He didn't have any command over the modern English, so to speak. But God, when man say no, God say yes. Now, it, it, it goes a little further in the book of Exodus 5 verses 2. It says, with the boldness of, with the boldness, the two brothers entered Pharaoh's place. I can see Moses walking in confidence, walking boldly, shoulders up and head forward because he comes in the name, not of himself, but in the name of the Almighty God, where kings bow down. 
And of course, when Aaron stated that he came with a message from the Lord requesting that Moses let his people go, Pharaoh sharpened or sharted with hatred. Who is the Lord that I should obey this voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let go is nor I will let Israel go. Exodus 5, verses 2. Instead of letting um, these vulnerable slaves go, uh, these slaves who needed uh, to be tender to, to take care of, Mo, um, Pharaoh had shown dominion over other men. Pharaoh increases workload, but God would soon let the proud king know that something is brewing. God will soon humble this king who exalted himself in the presence of God. So Pharaoh was warned by Moses and Aaron that God will send one plague after the other. One plague after the other. He was warned, but he has made the decision to what? To experience this plague. Now the Lord message to Pharaoh was, by this, in the book of Exodus 7, verses 17, it says, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. It was long before that the plagues began to fall, just as God had promised. Ten plagues to be exalted before, ten plagues to be exact. Before each plague, Moses and Aaron would warn Pharaoh that judgment will come hoping that he would release Israel and spear himself and his nation from the disasters, from these pandemic diseases, sores and boils, water turning into blood and, and famine upon the land, but fear or hardening heart, he will not listen. But each time God gave him the opportunity to change his mind, just like how God has given us the opportunity today to be repent and baptized and change our life, turning away ourselves from wickedness, sexual immorality, stealing, lying lips, adultery, fornication. God is saying, turning away from your wickedness or else it will bring judgment upon you because he has given you life and death. You choose. First, the water in the Nile River turning to blood. The fish died. The water soon in Egypt turned into blood. Seven days, Pharaoh refused to let the people of God go. The next plague was frog invading the land. Millions of them, they would wake up and step and frog would be running across their feet. My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. I mean, you have a lot of people who are lovers of frogs. But where I am from, in that part of the world, frogs bring diseases. Frogs are slimy. To me, frogs are scary. Now, the plagues of the frog invade the land and millions of them. So people was walking and stepping over frog at they speak at that time. And of course, they would go to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, let God's people go. But Pharaoh is king. And Pharaoh hardened his heart. So he said, he will not let the people go. It's important to note that while uh, uh, these three plagues fall upon them, they, they lived in Egypt, including the Hebrews. The seven remaining plagues would not affect God's people. Listen to what God says. And in that day, I will send, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell. A little bit of demographic. When Joseph was there, the first Pharaoh before he died, make an agreement with him and said, I will give you the land of Goshen. That was in Egypt. It wasn't separated. He gave them a land of Goshen because they were shepherds. Their skill was shepherds. They weren't architects. They weren't lawyers or doctors back in those days. They had profession of what? Being a shepherd, teaching them patience, humility, teaching them how to depend on God for food and water. And then they made an agreement. Pharaoh said, I will give you my cattle. 
so you could take care of them in Goshen. So Goshen, God says, he sets the Israelites apart. So the plagues which were falling upon, upon Egypt didn't affect the Goshen. What a mighty God that we serve. The fourth plagues when the, was the infestation of flies upon the land of Egypt, except Goshen, where the Israelites lived. The fifth plague was the terrible disease that swept across the country, destroying the animals and livestock. Pharaoh became curious. You see, instead of being repentant, he became curious. Yes, my church family. God does miracles. The enemy creates illusion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God does miracle, and that miracle is everlasting, but the enemy creates delusion. Something which is temporary, which seems like trickery, and deceived you to make you think he can also do miracles as well. Pharaoh, now then Pharaoh sent, and indeed not even to the livestock of Israel died. In, in Goshen, the, is, the, the, the livestock were, were bouncing and, 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 and live and, and fresh. But in, Israel, in Egypt, the livestock were dying. The sixth plague brought boils upon man, livestock, and still determined uh, Pharaoh refused to release Israel. Now, Moses' next predicament was a seventh plague of ale. The seventh plague of ale. God even suggested that what? The preparation will be made by what? By, by saved men un, un, unless, unless they obey God, my brothers and sisters. They will experience the same thing. Here we have the Egyptians and here we have the Israelites. It was for everyone, even the Egyptians. If they had humbled themselves and let God people go, if, if Pharaoh had humbled himself and let God people go, then these plagues would have stopped. These suffering would have stopped. These pain would have stopped. But in a sense, he challenges God. By now, the Egyptians could clearly see the elements of nature were under the control of the almighty God of the Israelites. They should have now understood that their only safety was in obeying God and God alone, not Pharaoh. For a few short moments, Pharaoh was even considering his heart to let the Israelites go. But as the plague subsides, the true intention of Pharaoh projected. Moses warned that eighth plague would be an incredible plague of locust. Shocked by the thought of more devastating plague, Pharaoh's counselor pleaded with him to let the Israelites go. But the king still refuses. The locusts ate what little they have left in the land of Egypt. They came with ninth plague, three days of darkness. So intense that the darkness could have been felt. It was tangible. Think about it. The darkness so intense that you can touch it. I don't know about you. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. But I will never want to experience the wrath of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We talk about the love of God in John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but everlasting life. But nobody liked to talk about the wrath of God. Here we have a mere man because he's a king according to the land. He think that he's lifted up. He think that he can live forever. He took God's grace and mercy for granted. And he said, he challenges God by refusing to obey the commandments of God, to obey the directive from God. Moses informed the king that one plague would be poured out upon Egyptians and destroying angel. 
Hallelujah. A destroying angel would pass through the land at midnight and slaughter all the firstborn, both humans and animals. Again, the Hebrews were to be spared. But this time, they had to do something. Just as in this last days, my brother. Yes, it is not will for God to perish. But we have to do something if we do not want to be perished. Am I right, my brother? We have to do something. Am I right? We have to let go from the life that we're living, which is not godly. Let go from the things that separate us from God. And of course, God says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Obey what God says instead of man. When man use their intellect and their reasoning and their sorcery, I call it, to try to convince you on things which is natural, things which has morality against your own conscience, you should lift up a standard and say, no more, let it go and let God take full control. And of course, they had to, and it says in the book of Exodus 12, verses 29, what a night that must, be, must have been. Thousands of Hebrew families and many Egyptian watch as the father sprinkle blood of the lamb on their doorposts. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying, my brother? The Hebrew, the Hebrews, the Israelites, they have followed the instruction of God and they have killed lamb and spilled the blood and sprinkle it on the doorpost. How we brought it in today? Today I ask the question, how would you sprinkle the blood of the lamb on your heart? Because your heart is that doorpost. Hallelujah. It is showing you that you what? You've been saved by the blood of the lamb, saved by the grace of God, saved only by God and God alone. That was a prophetic reasoning. That was a prophecy would have come filled. The lamb of the world would have shed his blood for the entire world so they may have the opportunity to be saved. God was doing it. God was acting that out in the presence of the Israelites. There is a story for us today. Jesus Christ is that lamb, the lamb of the world. It was John the Baptist who said, here comes the lamb of the world. That lamb would have been slain. And his blood would have been shed. That precious blood, that blood, that blood, that wonderful working blood. Without the blood of Jesus, none of us could have been saved. And it says, in, of course, in Exodus 12 verses 29, it says, And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. But when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, throughout that vast land of Egypt, the cries and the mourners could be heard. Pharaoh remembered he had what? Ridiculed the Hebrews. God had an, what? I definitely said, who is the Lord that I should obey him? He said with a voice, he mocked God. So God had to show him who is God. Now, uh, he, to humble this king, what he did? He strike the firstborn of Egypt. Both animal and human alike and now for the firstborn of pharaoh in exodus 12 29 it says the firstborn of pharaoh a uh, firstborn of the captive who has been what in dungeon all these firstborn of livestock were died but in the house where the blood has what has been sprinkled in the obedience of god instructed not one of the firstborn was touched with the plague The story of the plague of Egypt did not just, it's not just fascinating. It is a biblical story. It is a true story. It happened even until the day today that the people in Israel still celebrate the commemoration, the Passover, that the dead angel has passed over their houses of their ancestors because they've sprinkled the blood of the lamb on their doorposts as a symbol of obedience to God. This time, they were not by the ten plagues, but only by seven. And they were called the seven last plagues. Apparently, 
it is in reference to seven last break that a uh, uh, day of Moses once again God people will be protected the seven last plagues is at the end time so it was in the physical there will be in the spiritual are you hearing what I'm saying brother whatever happened in the whole testament the New Testament will do what? Reveal it to the revelation of Jesus Christ. There were 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes in the Old Testament. Which symbolize the 12 nation of God's people. And there will be what? 12 disciples in the New Testament. I don't know about you, I'm not a mathematician, but 12 and 12 is 24. And when John had a vision that he looked in heaven, he saw the 24 elders around the throne of God. Wow. We are, my brothers and sisters, spiritual Israel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There was a physical Israel who would have experienced and go through everything that we have been through in this day. So we can relate. We can relate. Search your heart. Search the word of God. Compare it and to see if it makes sense. The everlasting gospel will be what? Preached to the entire world. Was it preaching then? We in this day today will finish the end of the story. We today, as brothers and sisters, who will lift up that standard for God, lift it up. Go ye therefore to preach and to teach the word of God to hasten his coming. My brothers, my sisters, you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have a, a, a doctorate or a PhD or masters in divinity. No one has to appoint you. The only thing you have to be doing, God has to anoint you and send you. Amen. Are you, are you hearing what I say, my brothers? There is man appointment and there is God anointment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When God anoints you, nobody can stop you. When God gives you your gifts and gives you a purpose, no one can fire you. No one can take it from you because God, who God bless, no man curse. Are you hearing what I'm saying, my brother? Brother David. You know, you may look at the preacher and say, wow, the preacher speak with so much conviction. Yes, because I've tasted and see what the Lord has to me. I have tried and see, I've questioned and see what God has for me is for me. He who is righteous, in Revelation 21 verses 11 it says, He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. Christ worked as the high priest in heaven. And every person will have decided what? The eternal life or eternal death. Life and death have given to you, Christ says. Then the wrath of God will come against sin. And, we'll ex and, and, and we will be experienced that if we're sinful, but we will re-experience a salvation, meaning saving from our damnation, if we are obedient to God. Life and death, God has given to you. The only thing that God gives us that he cannot control, and is our free will. And the enemy knows that. The enemy is after a mind. Because whosoever control the mind control the man. Whosoever control the man, control whatever he do, control his worship. And whosoever control the worship, declare themselves to be God. So be careful what we expose our mind onto. Be careful what we expose our mind onto, what we spend time medicating and introducing to our mind. You see, I was reading the Bible one day and I was asking the Holy Spirit to give me, to reveal to me my purpose. A lot of people go through life, men and women, not understanding their purpose. We mixed 
We mixed up or cross-referenced our purpose sometimes to our jobs. White Elder Ross. And we spend so much time and allow our jobs to take care of us and, and consume us so much, we think it's our purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying, my, my, my brother? Your purpose is what you were born with. Your purpose is what God has gifted you with. And when God gifted you with something, because he knows that gift that he gives you is doing that, is bringing you closer to your salvation. Because your gift is your purpose, so you live for that. You, you don't work for that. When you work, you can be fired. You work with an with a expectation of a, 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 a compensation for something. But when you're gifted with something and you're within your purpose, you do it to do what? To give God glory. What are you doing and what you're doing today and what you're doing today doesn't give God glory. This was the contrast between the Israelites and the Egyptian. The Israelites obeyed. They sprinkled blood on the doorpost. Pharaoh could have, I'm sure Pharaoh heard he had servants. And, he, and I'm sure a lot of Egyptians, they were saved too by sprinkling blood on their doorpost. So it wasn't all Egyptians that died, the firstborn, but those who listened and heard and believe. That's why I said John 3 verse 16 is not just for believers. It's not just for unbelievers. It's for everyone. Whosoever would believe, that's the word. Whosoever believe may have access to eternal life. Let me continue and go forward. So to the prophet John was given to view what the time was in that time. Then, it, then what? Then I saw another angel, great and marvelous. What? Seven angels having the seven last plagues. Revelation 5 verses 1 says, for, for in them the wrath of God was complete. Seven angels was given the seven wrath to pour out onto the earth. The wrath of God. Plagues was upon humanity. Of course, it was those who didn't serve God. And again, John wrote, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, So we go back straight to Revelation 16, verses 2. So the first angel went and poured out the bowl upon the earth. But at the same time, perhaps they were what? They were smitten. They were strike. And of course, they were killed. The fish in the water had died because the water had turned into blood. There was no oxygen in that water but just pure blood. Then the third angel closely related to the second one, then the third angels pour out the bowl upon the rivers and the spring and upon the waters and they became as blood. Revelation 16, 4. Imagine how smelly that must have been. Have you smelled blood before? It has that pungent scent, that unpleasant odor. And of course, a lot of people have been Scared of blood. Revelation 5 verses, uh, six, 16 verses 5 to 6. And it says, but his judgment was justified for the angel declares. So the angels were there to testify God's judgment of pouring the seven plagues upon Egypt. God had warned them. God had foretold them. If you do not listen to me, this is what's going to happen. Because I am going to show you that I am God. And you are a mere human being. I am the creator. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. How dare can we challenge God with our presumptuousness? It was the same kind of narrative that war broke out into heaven. Remember? And it brought here on earth. The Bible says, my people perishes because of lack of knowledge. Now, in Isaiah 3, 33, verses 16, it says, Now during uh, the separate time, uh, thirst will, um, it says, bread will be given to him and his water will be sure, right? 
God is explaining to say, in these times when you obey, your bread will be sure and water to quench your thirst will be sure. God is saying to you, in these times, I will provide for you. I will guide you. I will protect you. Look to me and depend on me, not yourself. Then in Revelation 16, it says, uh, the Bible described the fourth plague to be poured out. Then the fourth angel poured out the bowl on the sun. And then power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. To scorch men with fire. I can only imagine how hot that sun must have been to scorch your skin. To let you feel, to make your blood boils. As if you feel like you want to die, but you cannot die. That heat. Then the fifth angel poured out the vial, the, 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 the vial upon what? The headquarters of the beast. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the throne of the beast. With the sixth plague, it was poured out. It, 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 it was poured out on the final battle of Armageddon. Uh, then the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river of Euphrates. Again, if we know anything about Euphrates, we remember in that great city of Jerusalem, right? How Babylon had captured, right? They block up that river in Euphrates. And then that was the access channel for them to infiltrate the city. Do you remember that? So this is, of course, prophetical. It is speaking prophetical. When you think you're in safety, it's a sudden destruction. When you think that you're, you're protected and you don't need God help, you don't need God protection, and you're in that fortified city, you're in that fortified place, be warned if you do not allow, if you do not let go and let God take full control and depend on him, then that's the exact thing to happen. Your city is going to fall. Your house is going to fall. That's what God was saying. Now, Revelation 16, verses 12, it says, And I saw an unclean spirit like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. I just want to explain to you, my brothers and sisters, I'm going through through the inches of time. These are things, that's why we need Bible study, to, to study the line, line upon line, precept upon precepts, so we can, uh, we can see the narrative and where it's coming from. I know I'm giving you snippets, but we have to understand in the interest of time, and, and that's why it's excellent when we, we, we get Bible study to study the story, and of course, chapters upon chapters comparing, so we can understand what happened in the hand of, all, of it all. And it says, Revelation 16 verses, I'll just read from 12 there, and it says, and it said, and I saw three unclean spirits, like frog, coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Understand that it was not frog, but they have what? That spirit is a frog on the mouth of a dragon. It's not a physical dragon, but it's a characteristics of a dragon. Revelation 16, 17, it says, Before that comes the last final plague, then the seventh plague around, um, the seventh plague, angel pour out his bowl upon the air. What you breathe. Upon the air that the angel poured out his bowl upon. That plague. Let's, let, let, let's take a little bit of time to decipher this. Upon the air that we breathe. How can he pour it out on that air? My brother, the Bible talk about the prince of the air. It speaks about different spirit taking up dominance over certain parts of this world. It talks about Satan's dwelling place. It's important for you and I, when we see certain place, we do not step in, we do not venture. Because when we step out of the protection of God and step in Satan's dominion, harm will come unto us. That's what the Bible is saying. But you may ask yourself now, how can I be certain that God's protection, when plagues fall, I'm protected? You can ask yourself that. 
those who demonstrated their faith in Egypt, having faith in the coming Redeemer by sprinkling the blood of the Lamb on their doorpost, were delivered from the final plague in Egypt. When the destroying angel passed over their house, they were saved, whether they were Egyptian, which is unbelievers, or whether they were Israelites, believers, once they step into faith, once they believe and move by faith, once they accept it, once they believe in the faith of Jesus Christ, once they hope in Jesus Christ, and once they had the love of Jesus Christ, they were saved. And glory be not unto them, but to God, when the destroyed angel passed over, they were safe because they followed God's commitment and instruction. And God again, God says, God's people would what? Will be spared from the final plague. If they were accepted by the Lamb, if they chose the blood of the Lamb, God, as their sacrifice, will allow His blood to cleanse their hearts, to cleanse their mind. They were what? They were choosing God's way instead of man's way. Are you hearing what I'm saying, my brothers? And, and of course, if you have a friend, if you have a brother, if you have a sister, if you have a family member, even a stranger, let him know that God is my lord and my savior even if they're going to punish you even if they're going to prosecute you say to yourself although they slay me yet will i praise thee i suffer not for my sake but for jesus christ and jesus christ alone are you hearing what i'm saying my brothers be e convinced and convicted in what you believe and in who you believe the story is told in an australian lumber lumberman who built a little cabin at the edge of the forest it wasn't much but it was home to him one day as he returned from that arm um, from work he was stunned and heartbroken to find his little cabin just a heap of what ruins all that was left was a few pieces of charred lumber some metal some blackhead nail and by which which was ravished by flames he walked out to the place where his old kitchen cube had stood all that he found were a mountain of ashes some burnt down to the ground and of course then he keep glancing down to his feet his eyes caught a curious sight a mount of charred feather Idly, he went over and he kicked over that piece of wood. And when and what do you suppose happened, church family? What do you suppose happened? Here was his coup burnt down, his house burnt down, ashes all over the place. To show you the blessings of God, four little fuzzle, four little fuzzy baby chicken scrambled out, miraculously was protected by the wings of the mother. Hallelujah. I hear what I'm saying, my church family. There were four little chickens. Crept out, stumbled out. Out of the mother's wings where the mother was charred to death. Sacrificed her life to save his chick. And of course, as the lumberjack saw that, there was hope. In a hopeless situation, there was victory in that situation, right? In a most of our lives, when we think that we should have been dead, when most of our life, when we, when people have pulled it down and said, "You will come to nothing good." In most of our life, we've been monitoring and and, and and challenging, and we've been doing things our way. When we let go from that stronghold, when we let go from doing things our way and let Jesus Christ, there's hope. In our hopelessness that was the moral part of the story it was the most beautiful story i heard it was as this for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but everlasting life and as the preacher closed could anything be a more reassuring allowing god a loving God, a loving God promises to hide us under his wings. 
We don't need to worry about the plagues. We don't need to worry about nothing or how we'll survive. We need only to turn our lives to him. He will protect us, my brother. He will guide us. He will provide us because he loves us. He died for you. He died for me. He died, of course, for everyone. His anger is against sin that caused pain and caused death, but not against you. Even now, his spirit is pleading with us, pleading with your heart to let go from your sins, to let them covered, to be covered in the blood of Jesus. The decision is yours. The choice is yours, my brothers and sisters. Surrendering your will for God's will to be done. Surrender your will to him, my brothers and sisters. You're the preacher praying and begging you, please, for your salvation's sake. Salvation is at stake. It is coming to the culmination of the end of world history. Surrender to him. Choose to obey him. He will reveal all things to you. He will reveal his words. As soon as you do, you can. Rest assurance in his grace, in his presence, in his protection. And always put God first. And no matter what your future is, God has a future for you. In my father's house, he said, I have, a, I have many mansions. And I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if it was not so, I would have told you so. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that where I am, you may be also. All you got to do, as the music keep on playing, think of a day, think of a day, that there will be no more pain, my brother. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more murder. No more heart broke. No more anger. All things would pass away and it would make new. Would you kneel with me while I pray today? Kneel with me wherever you are. Just kneel. As the preacher prays and the music continues as the preacher prays. Heavenly Father God, thank you for life and life abundantly. Thank you for this day that we're here witnessing his story. Lord, as Oakley and Gospel Ministry continue to spread the word, you've, you've given us that mandate. And the mandate of this ministry is to go here, therefore, to preach and to teach the word of God. To hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come not to preach with eloquence or poisonous, but we come to preach, thus saith the Lord, sola scriptoria. And as our mantra is, if God said it, I will obey it. That's settling it. And I will do it. So Lord, help each and every one of us. Those who are viewing online. Those who are tuning in for the first time. To make a decision. To surrender our lives, their lives, unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My church family, my appeal is right here in this decision card. You have heard the Lord's message to his people, sons and daughters of God. And you're never too far away from God. There's nothing that you can do to separate God from you. It is simple. Please fill out a decision card the card is in the link there you go open that link someone will reach out to you they will require your information so ensure that you fill out the card I don't know where you are or what walk you are in life but I believe that the Lord led you to this moment check what is appropriate for you there's no force it is very simple 
what the Holy Spirit had told you to do. You've heard the message. You believe. I will give you a moment to fill that card out. Use that link. It has been placed in that comment, in the chat. I will go through each of these questions with you. While you contemplating and making that decision, this will be the most important decision you've made in your life. This is a life and death situation. Seriously. The greatest decision you will ever make in your life. So as we go through that, my brother and sisters, remember, please join us. Talk with the evangelist. You have a question that you need clarity. Join us the after prayer, after connect, where you can connect with the evangelist. The Zoom ID is 882-0411-1628. And the passcode is 306338. And of course, most importantly to my brothers and my sisters, to all those who have been here with us tonight, and all those who have been with us night after night, tomorrow will be our final sermon of the series. July the 23rd, 2022. Our final evening. We have been going through the Bible, the different evangelists, different men and women of God preaching, declaring the word of the Lord. Night after night, please come out. We invite you. We invite you to invite a friend. Take a friend with you. A family member. You don't want to miss this. This is the, the conclusion of the narrative. The conclusion of the series. Reassurance, certainty in uncertain times. The best is yet to come. And of course, so long, bye-bye. And for those, and of course, for those who cannot um, connect, we have problem connecting. For those who, um, of you uh, may not be able to connect and access that decision card, you can, call, <clears throat> you can call in at 905-571-1022, extension 23, 203. Again, for those who, of you who have problem online connecting to the decision card or connecting to the after connect, you can dial in <clears throat> at the number 905-571-1022. 22. It was a pleasure. It was a blessing to take on this journey with you. Assurance, certainty is uncertainty. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you, O oh God, that you speak through me. So when others look at me, they don't see the evangelist, but they see Christ in me. Heavenly Father, guide in each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, and have a blessed evening.
this rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Heavenly Father, you have spoken tonight through your servant. We have all heard you, and it is our desire to follow you, to do your will. We know, Lord, that some of us are having challenges making up our minds or even surrendering. Lord, we ask that even at this time, you will speak in your own tones and that you will help that those of us who are still wondering what to do will eventually turn to you and trust and serve you. The evangelist has given us food for thought because you inspired those words. We pray that they will not go unheeded. We thank you for those decisions that are being made now and those who are still pondering. And we pray that whatever is done will be done because you ordained it. Please bless each one and keep us close to you. We ask, Lord, that as we prepare for the coming night's meetings, that we will remember that it is because you love us why you cause us to have these meetings. We pray that you will impress on each, each mind the importance of being ready now rather than later. And we ask that you will continue to bless those who spread your words as much as you bless those who hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And, okay. Now we'd like to remind you that the meetings continue um, throughout the week. 
and we pray that you all will join us from time to time so that you will not miss the important things in these meetings. I'd also like to remind you that we do have a special prayer this evening after the meetings. You can, jo you can also meet the evangelist on Zoom as you join us on, with this, in the following Zoom link. Meeting ID 882 411-1622. That's 882-0411-1622. And the passcode will be 3063-3063. Passcode again. Three zero six three three eight. Please remember to join us if you have a special prayer or if you would like to meet the evangelist on Zoom for a special counseling. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your evening and please join us for our next meeting. God bless.